How's it going? James with OnlineCarShow.net. In this video, we're going to be talking about the SJM Manufacturing Line Lock Kit. So without hesitation, let's get this video started. Well, before we get into the line lock review, I wanted to go over some updates with the car and the channel. Uh, here recently, I have ceramic coated the hood of the car and the street wheels. Uh, I'll show you a quick video or a quick photo here. Ended up looking really good. As y'all know, ceramic coat adds a little bit of scratch protection, plus it adds a lot of depth to the paint. So uh, the results, uh, of course, add a little bit of shine to my wheels and uh, it kind of added a little bit uh, I guess the black vinyl hood on the 1LE uh, is a little bit more true black, I should say, just a little cleaner, wetter looking, if you will. Plan to polish and uh, clay bar and ceramic coat the paint of the car next. Uh, maybe I'll release a video. Let me know in the comments what y'all think. And we've got a bunch of stuff coming up for the channel. We've got the Camaro swag mods over there for the interior, tow rods from BMR, suspension. Uh, I've got MSD ignition wires to go on, American Authority rocker panels, GM parts house bow ties, so it parts are kind of adding up, so I'll be releasing some videos here pretty quickly in the future. Uh, stay tuned for them. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe below. Also, to give an update, the race, of course, this weekend was canceled because of rain in Houston, oh. unfortunately. Of course, it's second Saturday racing of every month of this year. So February 9th, next month, me and Bubba Blue will hopefully meet on the track and I'll be out there racing. So please come out to the races. Uh, it's in Sealy, Texas at the Hennessy track, uh, Lone Star Motorsports Park. Uh, we'd love to see you out there, you know, support your favorite racer, send your car down the track, or just spectate and watch. It's really fun, good time. Uh, look forward to it, and uh, February 9th will be here shortly. Also added street tires to the car. Uh, as y'all know, I have the drag package wheels over there, which I still need a ceramic coat. But I went with the Nitto NT555 G2 and a 315 on the back and the 285s on the front, I think. Uh, a little bit fatter, but I've got the 3 millimeter wheel spacer, and the 1LE doesn't have the harn wiring harness on the back that can rub. So I should be totally fine with the 315s. Uh, it's 30 profile and height. Seem to be a great tire. I haven't got to put a lot of miles on them, but uh, so far I really like the feel of them uh, over the good years. They of course aren't run flat, but neither were the good years. So uh, I do carry a air compressor in the trunk, tire gauge, and a plug kit in case I get into trouble. So so I guess to dive into the subject matter of the line lock kit from SJM Manufacturing. First, I want to start off and say the kit quality uh, in the custom button that I got uh, from Auto Empire here in Houston was great. I had no issues with that whatsoever. The install could have gone a lot smoother. And uh, I, because of you know the events that happened in the install, I stopped shooting the video of the install halfway through it and uh, wasn't going to release it to y'all. So what I plan to do is give y'all a review of my install and point y'all to go look at Lethal Camaro's video. But listen to the couple issues I had, you know, and take them into consideration when you're doing your install. Uh, the first issue I guess I had here was, I'm going to show you a clip here of the ABS brake block. Basically what you do is you take out the second and third line on this and you're going to run it and loop through the solenoid that they provide uh, or solenoid system, whatever, the line lock kit. You're going to take off the second and third one. Well, you can't really get these mixed up because actually the fittings are different sizes for both of those. So it'll be really easy. Don't worry about getting the lines themselves mixed up because the size is actually different wrench. One of the things Lethal said in his video was, you know, tighten it down to it's snug and give it a little bit, you know, little nudge more. 
Well, I think I took this wrong, uh, and I should have listened to that part a little bit better, but so I tied him down and I felt a little nudge like it was going tighter. I gave it a little bit nudge more, considered that good to go. Uh, but then afterward, uh, I got in the car after bleeding all the brakes and so forth. Uh, I got in the car and pushed down the brakes and they started, of course, going down like there was a leak. So I get out and start investigating. Uh, look on top of that ABS brake block and there's fluid so it evidently was coming brake fluid was shooting through the fittings as you know brake pressure is hydraulic pressure is being applied so uh, I got out the wrench retightened them down had to re-bleed the brakes but uh, when you're tightening them down make sure it tightens not just to where the fitting is and also wiggle that fitting just like lethal said in his video while it's loose make sure it's good and snug down try to hold it down with one hand the the pipe while you're wrenching it down this will make sure that fitting stays snug uh, and then when you're tightening it down you don't want to just tighten it down to where the fitting is and you feel the fitting you want to basically tighten it down to where that the fitting is sitting on top of that ABS block so it's making a snug fit with fitment with the block itself so all the way down is what he's talking about uh, and you have to be careful because that is an aluminum fitting so you can initially you know break the threads or break the fitting itself uh, the second problem I had uh, was the cigarette lighter button uh, I went with a custom button from SJM or actually Auto Empire hooked me up with that. I didn't even know I was getting it, but it ended up being awesome. It'll take a two-step controller too. It's got empty wires in there where you can wire your two-step controller through that too. But really cool how it mounts to the cigarette lighter location or in place of your cigarette lighter in the Camaro. Uh, two thumbs up there. But as I was taking the cigarette lighter out, as you're gonna see here in the clip, I broke a piece off of the cigarette lighter for my car, unfortunately. So I'll have to order a little replacement and go through and change it all over. But no worries, it wasn't any problem with the kit or whatever, it's just a really tight fitting part from GM. Getting that cigarette lighter out is fun, so you know, take your time, be careful. I saw Lethal used a uh, interior tool kind of similar to this one but uh honestly i had issues using this because it was so much pressure actually the plastic on the end was bending trying to get it out that tells you how tight it is in there so if you can wrestle that thing out carefully and not break it uh, that's kind of the second issue i had with the install other than that i mean uh, i took my time doing it it's wired correctly i wired in a toggle on off switch unlike the lethal video i think he just wired it straight to the switch i wanted the on and off just because i do drive it on the street a lot and uh just i know it's redundant but just having the satisfaction of having all the power off to the switch uh, but he wired it straight through you can do it either way actually with that way that switch is wired you could actually wire the button power to where it lights up only when activated if you wire it on the other side or as i wired it on the front side it'll light up any time that the line lock kit has power to it basically anytime that button's active is how i have it wired uh, you could wire it towards the other side to where only when you have the button down is the light go off there's numerous ways you could wire that uh, but the instructions from uh, SJM were helpful and precise. Uh, but I recommend going out watching the Lethal Camaro video in combination with those directions because this is a little bit more of a lengthy install. And if you're doing this at home in your, you know, in your garage, uh, it's you know can be easily done. It wasn't too bad of a job, but you will need you know a little bit of electrical knowledge as far as you know connecting wires proper, properly in the car and uh, you need to make sure you have a full set of metric wrenches uh, to get in there. Wasn't all that bad. It took me, I would say, an uh, hour and a half or so if everything had gone perfect because I had to re-bleed the brakes. And uh, another reason it took a little bit longer is you only really need to bleed the front two brakes because that's the only lines you're really messing with uh, in your brake system. But because I was switching my brake fluid to this Motel 660 RBF, or give you a little bit less heat fade, and uh, should stiffen up the brakes just a tiny bit, it's good stuff. 
there's a cheaper version of this, the uh, 600 RBF, and there's the fully synthetic 660. Highly recommend this stuff, but because I was switching the fluid, I had to bleed all four brake systems fully and flush. So that took some time. Uh, and then of course, when I messed up uh, and there was a brake leak, I wanted to go back through and re-bleed the front brakes. So that cost me extra time. So the install, it should have gone a lot smoother than it did. Uh, if I would have seen this installed before, I would have had probably less problems. Another thing that helped me out a little bit is I had the Rotofab intake with the air sound tube delete system. So because I don't have a sound tube and I have a little cover there, uh, just like in Lethal's video, he had the same thing. Uh, you basically pull that cover up, slide the wire through, and it allows you a really easy, natural spot to run wires from your engine bay to the interior of your car. So that helped a lot. You are gonna need to either drill a hole or find a way using a sound tube hole or something to get a wire from the engine bay to the interior of the car. Other than that, I uh, think the results look awesome. Uh, the button looks really cool with the Camaro swag stuff I've got. I've got the, uh, if y'all have seen some of my recent videos, I've been adding the Camaro swag interior covers and stuff in carbon fiber and red just to accent the interior of the car and a really competitive price is really cheap. And uh, two thumbs up again to SJM Manufacturing. Love this mod, recommend it to anybody. I know I, the One LE has a line lock system in it, but uh, anybody that's gone through and tried to navigate and use that system knows that it's not fun. You have to do all kinds of planning and all that on the drag strip that personally I just don't want to do. I like the SJM because I lift a little cover, push the button, my, you know, after pushing the brakes down and uh, my line lock's active. It, Speaking of which, all you have to do as far as the functionality of this button is literally hold down the brakes with your feet, push down the SJM line lock button, release your foot from the brake pedal, and your front brakes will stay held while your rear brakes will re release, allowing you to burn out without screwing up your rear brake pads and still keeping your front ones uh, held so you can do a burnout in a small space like a drag strip. So really cool mod, this should really help me on the drag strip to heat up the new drag radials. Thank you all again so much for watching my video. As I mentioned, I've got a ton of mods coming for the Camaro. So stay tuned, make sure you hit that like and uh, subscribe below to support the Online Car Show channel. And I hope you all have a great week. Aftermath.